my name is durgesh and i'm recording this video to demonstrate a couple of use cases that i tested myself today to demonstrate the impact of generative ai on the software development life cycle so we'll start with use case number 1 code generation generative ai will be able to assist in generating the entire code based on the requirements what you see on the screen is open ai model is connected on the left hand side and meta's model is connected on the right hand side and i am giving instructions to both the model at the same point of time asking both these models individually to write a code for me that will fetch the weather of delhi by fetching the information from an api i'm also giving an instructions to the system that the code should be in python language and the open ai system has already started generating the code for me so i can see the entire code with a little bit of instructions towards the end now i'm waiting for meta's llama to model to generate a response back to my query and it has picked up the query now and started to generate the code for me now this code may or may not be 100% accurate and that's where the human manual review needs to take place i'm 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 showcasing both the models so that when a developer is using text to code use case he can compare all these models and pick the best one so that is about our use case number 1 let's move on to use case number 2 which is bug detection and resolution now generative ai can analyze the code and identify potential bugs or vulnerabilities in the code so i'm going to go back to the console and do the exact same thing open both the models at the same point of time and give instructions to the model to identify the bugs in the code that is written by one of my team members so i give a prompt to the model one of my team member has written a python code to fetch the weather in delhi please help me with the bug detection which is the potential bugs and vulnerabilities and i will type the entire python code that i will give the model as an input now this could potentially be very useful when the developers are doing unit testing before passing it on to the testing team for an evaluation they could potentially use generative ai to identify bugs at their end now as you see open ai's model on the left hand side has started generating potential bugs and vulnerabilities and all these vulnerabilities that i see on the left hand side are pretty valid now meta's model has also started generating the bugs and vulnerabilities and if you look at the first point generated by both the models it is exactly the same which is hard coded api keys which is absolutely not recommended in any software development life cycle that you hard code your api passwords in your code itself and it has correctly identified a hard coding of the api key as a potential issue number 1 both the models have identified the same so we have eight bugs identified by open ai model and six bugs identified by the meta model now as a developer i've given the same piece of code 
to both the models i will collect the potential things that i like and i will go ahead and resolve it at my end manually but let's say for example i don't want to resolve the bugs manually i want generative ai only to resolve the bugs for me whatever the the model has detected in that case what i am going to do is i'll remove i'm removing one of the model meta's model for now and i'm just going to work with the open ai model and i will ask OpenAI's model to resolve all the bugs and the potential vulnerabilities that it has identified and give me back the, the fixed code without potential bugs and vulnerabilities as an output. As an input, I'll give the, the code that has bugs in it and as an output i expect the model will give me back the code without bugs and issues now an important thing to notice is although the system has given an output back to you that you see on the screen it is still very important that a human reviews this entire model output the human re reviews the entire model's output, which which is in front of the screen, and not trust the output blindly. And that was about our use case number two, which is bug detection and resolution. Now let's move on. Look at use case number three, which is natural language summary for the code, as well as code comments. So let's say, for example, if you have a couple of developers in the team and a couple of non-technical people who do not understand the code, it's important that everyone on the team understands what is being developed. So what you see on the screen I'm doing is I'm going to give a piece of code that my development team has written to both the models and i will ask them to generate a one paragraph summary for the code that i've given them as an input now if you look at it this is exactly opposite to text to code earlier we were giving text as an input and code was coming out as an output but here we are giving code as an input and text is what we expect as an output so you see the output has been generated by OpenAI's model while Meta's model is still working on it. So it says the provided Python code fetches weather information for a given city using Open Weather Map API. The code first imports the necessary libraries, it defines the function, and so on and so forth. It's a pretty, very, pretty comprehensive summary, which is exactly what we required from these models and a summary like this would help all the non-technical people remain on the same page as developers as well which is good for the project now let's look at the sub use case which is asking the generative ai model to put comments on the code so that the developer one can understand developer two's work and developer one and two can understand developer three's work because there are comments it becomes easier to read for different development teams now if you see all these comments that i'm highlighting on the screen are generated by the system if you look at our original piece of code it had very limited number of comments but if you look at our output code which the model has given us back it has a lot of quotes a lot of comments so if you look at weather temperature and humidity there were no quotes no comments within our original code but within our output code there are comments for each of the section which is what makes this 
use case pretty great because as developers there is often in complain that their teams do not put comments while creating the code now let's look into our next and the final scenario for this video which is generating test cases and test scenarios so what i'm going to do in this particular use case is i will give code as an input to the model and it will generate test cases and the scenarios as an output so this becomes an example of code to test cases type model so i'm going back to my console and using open api gpt 3.5 as my model and as an input to the model i'm going to give the same python code that we had been discussing in the previous use cases and using that python code i would expect that system gives me back some of the test cases in fact i would restrict the system to give me three examples only in a bullet point fashion so let's complete our input for the model before we execute it and analyze what output it has generated for us so i've written my python code i have given that input to the model now i see the output is generated and the three use cases it has identified for me is use case number 1 where the test case is valid city name so you give delhi as a city name and the api returns you the expected output test case number 2 you give an invalid city name and the api fails and does not returns the appropriate output test case number 3 is api key is missing or invalid all these are very useful and very valid test cases and scenarios and i'm pretty impressed so i'm asking the system to give me three more cases so that i can identify more scenarios so the test case number 4th is empty city name test case number 5 is connection timeout and test case number 6 is response format validation so those were the use cases that i can that i could think of that would significantly change the software development life cycle not only for cognizant but also for the entire industry